Hello, welcome to Satsang everyone. Welcome back after two days of this amazing celebration we had. It was full of love and blessings. So I think we will keep that going today. And we will start with a Sabbath by Bindu. The Guru is my worship. Then we have an introduction by Michael. And then we will listen to Tina Dillon with Chapsi Sahib. After that, we will have a reading by Selena. The title is Keep Your Gaze Fixed on the Master. And then after those, we'll have five minutes of meditation and master's video. And then we'll have group meditation with love and devotion. We can start. Thank you so much. Namaskar ji, all my brothers and sisters. Today offering this prayer to our beloved great master, Baba Savan Singh ji, and our beloved perfect living master, Ishwar Puri ji. I request everybody to participate in this prayer. So please close your eyes and imagine we have lighted candle in our hand and offering this prayer to our Baba ji. The lyrics is Guru Meri Puja. Guru Meri Puja, Guru Govinda, 
गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवंत गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु को विंद गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवंत गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु मेरा देवा अलख अभे सर्व पूजे चरण गुरु से गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु गोविंद गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवंत गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु बिन आवर नाही महिताओ आन तीन जप हो गुरु गुरु नाओ गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु गोविंद गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवान गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु मेरा ज्ञान गुरु हृदय ध्यान गुरु को पाल पूरख भगवान गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु गोविंद गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवंत गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु के शरण रहो कर जोड़ी गुरु बिना माही नहीं भोर गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु गोविंद गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवंत गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु बहुत ही तारे भव पार गुरु से वाते यम छुटकार गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु गोविंद गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवंत गुरु मेरी पूजा अंधकार में गुरु मंत्र उजारा गुरु के संग सकल निस्तारा गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु गोविंद गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवंत गुरु मेरी पूजा गुरु गोविंद गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवंत गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवंत गुरु मेरा पार ब्रह्म गुरु भगवंत थैंक यू वेरी मच Good morning everyone. Welcome to Satsang. Nice to see you all. 
Um, yesterday, it was a wow day where we had a marathon of God, continuous seva, where everybody at the table of God, where we are all sitting, where he, he's in the middle of our table, our access, everybody was putting something on the table, that everybody was offering seva to the great master, or mostly everybody. Some probably offered in their heart. And that is also good, as good. Um, and, um, and it was a big holy da dance, a holy party in God. And we all enjoyed, we all enjoyed those blessed moments where we felt master and we were with master and where two or more gather in my name, there I am. And every day here also the presence of God is felt and enjoyed and the showers of blessings are received. Every day in the start of satsang, I know I am nothing and I ask everything which is God. I am nothing and God is everything, that everything may attract this nothing and give it something to say, or may the ocean pour itself into the drop. <laughs> so some words can come um, from master. And uh, we're all thirsty. We're all thirsty here for God. And just there is a poem from Hafiz where he says that in the in some even in my country, in uh, people water is scarce. Water is scarce, and people had to travel for miles sometimes to get and put water on their head in jugs and take it back home. And we are also traveling for love. We are thirsty for love and we will do anything for a drop of love. That's why we come together here and we are traveling for love. We come together to fill our buckets with the drops of love, the showers of rain of grace from the Sawan that comes to us. We fill that bucket and then we are satisfied yet the day finishes and then we come back again to refill. This is the beautiful life of the human being that it is the time of grace in the human body is the time of grace and it's the time to fill our buckets, to fill our buckets to the brim. And then when our buckets are overflowing, we can give to this world. We can give to this world the blessings of our master, the blessings of the beautiful one, the most generous one who lives inside of us, who's always generous to give the grace. As I said yesterday, Baba, or the day before, Baba Sawan Singh says that grace is always available for whoever demands it. And we are always demanding that grace. The lovers of God, the addicted ones, they want continuous grace. They are thirsty. And that thirst is what draws us. That thirst draws us to the ocean where the uh, water is, the ocean of love. And we keep going every day, filling our buckets, every day more grace and more development, more development as love empties us and fills us with its own self. Everything that is opposite of love inside of us has to be replaced. And that's the job of the friend who lives inside of us to clean the house to clean the house. My master Santakar Singh used to say that when the master initiates you and takes a seat next to your soul, the, the process of cleaning starts automatically, starts directly. And he, he really like um, moves the mud. So even if we think, if we used to think that we are like a, the most wonderful person, if we used to think that uh, we are a great person and we have no flaws, once the mud is, uh, is moved, then we see our true self as the master moves the mud inside of us. And then we could see what has to be cleaned. And that's in the beginning of the initiation. The master starts the cleaning process. And then our inner selves is shown to us. All, what, all the rubbish that has to be removed is also shown to us by the grace of the master. And we know what has to be removed and he starts helping us remove it. That's why in the beginning of the path, this path is on many, many stages, many stages, and the disciples get the master they need. Some get a perfect master from the beginning, even though they are still on the baby level. 
and they grow with their perfect master and they don't need any other master. Some are set by God because everything, every moment, every moment of this time and material world, time and space world is also a divine manifestation. It's a divine manifestation. That means the hand of God is in every moment, whether you're initiated, whether you're not initiated. If you are having an experience in time and space, that, that whole experience was written and etched by the hand of, of, of God, by our inner self, by our highest self. So everything is perfect. Even though it does not seem perfect, everything is perfect. So yes, some, some disciples are put with the perfect master from the beginning, and they don't have to go to any other master, even though they are still growing uh, from the early stages of their development where you know, where it is said that you have to start by using the diary and cleaning yourself and putting the effort and that effort changes into grace and in grace becomes devotion, love and devotion and love and devotion pulls us inside more and more and deeper and deeper into our core self, into the roots of creation. Uh, some disciples are put with imperfect masters, imperfect because they, they don't at that time they, that was what's available in their area, and uh, he can take them to their level, to his level. He can take them to his level. Once they graduate this level, then automatically, automatically, the divine hand finds them another master of a higher level, and they are drawn by the love of that master. So directly they go to that master. Um, when I was initi initiated by, uh, uh, when, I, uh, when I went to Ishwar Puri Ji uh, in 2012, and then in 2017, I asked him for uh, initiation, and he said, I do not need it because I have a perfect master, my master Santakar Singh. Yet for other people, he did initiate them who came from Santakar Singh. Because why? It's because they needed it. They needed it, they needed that boost and they were initiated. So everything in the creation of Lord God, including time and space is according to his design. And we have no worry, we have no worry. We should not worry about who's the successor, who's the perfect master uh, that is after Ishwar Ji, why? Because first of all, we have him inside of us. We have Ishwar Puri Ji inside of us. We became his friend and he's inside of us. All what we have to do is to grow in our inner master, to grow in our inner master and have him 24 seven. When we have him 24 uh, seven, to, to even have the radiant form of the master is the greatest achievement of any disciple. As when we have the radiant form of the inner master, then he leads us on then it becomes effortless. We start to dash towards the kingdom of God, towards the light and the light magnetizes us and attracts us, attracts and by that magnetic divine love of the master, it takes us towards itself. And so the inner form of the master, once it is manifested, even though if it's not manifested 24 seven, then it, if it is there and it shows itself from time to time, that is wonderful achievement of a disciple and that will draw, that will grow, the disciple will grow in his master and at some points will reach levels, me and my father in the heavens are one and, 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 and it will be the perfection, perfection, the inner, the inner self of the disciple has become perfect, it has become his master. Um, and uh, there are many people like that who have reached that level, and it could be that in uh, their destiny, they're not to, uh, they, they are not uh, going to be used by God to be masters, but they enjoy themselves, they enjoy everything that the master enjoys, because their inner self has merged with the master, and now they are, their inner self is God, their core is God, and they function in this world as God in the human being, as God in the human form. Um, and, and, and they don't have to be masters because it's not in their destiny. People who are only, it's in their destiny that to become masters, then, then God makes them into masters because that's their destiny. And he starts to distribute the grace through them. He starts to distribute the grace through them. And whoever is on their list, whoever is on their list um, uh, will be attracted to them. 
will be attracted to them like moth to the fire. Uh, if you are on a list of the master, you directly fall in love with, with the master, no matter what. Even, even if people like have bad rumors about that master, uh, but, but he has uh, pulled you with his love, then you will go to that master, no doubt, and you will stay with him. On, on, if, and if he's a perfect master, you don't have to leave him. If he's not a perfect master, then at your soul at some point will find that I'm not getting anything. And if the soul does not get anything and it is stuck directly, God will manifest the inner self. Our inner self is God. Our higher self is God. Directly, it would manifest a master of a higher form. So it is not no worry because a lot of people ask me, who's the successor? of Ishwar Puriji and who's the successor of Santakarsi. And I say, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it whatsoever. You already have your inner master inside of you. You have already met your inner master. Just grow in your inner master. That's the job of God. That's the job of God to for the new initiates, for the new ones. It's the job of God to find them. It is the job of the perfect master to find them. As Ishwar Puriji, if the, ma if the master is perfect, then he will find his disciples wherever they are in the world. He will find them. The disciples cannot find him. Um, and, uh, and he will draw them. He will draw them through an inner experience. He will draw them through an outer experience or an outer godly coincidences. They will go to him for sure. Uh, and that is part of their destiny. So we are to just relax. As for the new people who need initiation, you know, we can guide them to all the masters who are authorized to give initiation. And there are uh, uh, there are five or six, uh, you probably know them all. And we can guide them to those people, uh, or more than five or six, you know. Uh, we can guide them to those people. And uh, if they are drawn, we can give them the names of all these people. If, uh, whoever draws them with his love, they can uh, start with him. And even if that person is not perfect, uh, to the highest level, like Ishwar Puri Ji is, that's good, that's okay, that's okay, because he's teaching them Sant Mat, he's teaching them how to meditate, and if their soul needs something higher, automatically that will be manifested by the inner self. So we are just to relax in God, relax in God, and keep on growing, keep on growing, that is our seva. Our seva, our highest seva to our master, is to keep growing in his love, keep growing in his love, and at some point, at some point, when, when the negativity is subdued, when the negativity is cleaned out, when all our desires are sublimated and all our attachments are cut, then it's going to be a holy party every day. Why? Because there is no negativity to cause suffering. That the negative world has the attributes of suffering in it. Problems, worries, diseases, and, uh, and worries. Problems, worries, suffering, and diseases belong to the lower self. Belong to the lower self. To, 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 they belong not to our godly self. But once, once those are sublimated, those are cleaned out, then it's a holy party every day. Every day is a holy party. And every day is an enjoyment in God. Life becomes a big enjoyment with no suffering. That it's only ecstasy. It's only bliss. It's only love, it's only joy, and it's indescribable. And it keeps on growing as we grow in God more and more and more. Once, once, once a God in us is more than the negative power, once we are 51%, our love for master becomes 51%, and our love for the world is 50 only percent, then we start to dash towards the master. And that is when the enjoyment starts. The more we dash, it is like the more the more we come towards the sun, the more we feel its heat. The more we feel its heat, the more we see its light. The more we develop spiritually, the more we dash towards God, then the more we enjoy. And at some point, at some point, there will be merger. There will be merger where soul merges with the soul of all souls, that God is the soul of all souls. And matter here, matter cannot merge together. Matter cannot merge together, but soul can merge with God. And God is the soul of all souls. So we, when we merge with God, we are also merging with everybody else. 
we're also merging with everybody else that we become one of the one with them and one with God we, and Ishwar Puli Ji that we uh, uh, said that we reach levels where we enjoy ourselves as soul and as God we enjoy our individuality and our totality simultaneously simultaneously my master Santakar Singh said that once we reach that level where we become pure soul um, then uh, then we are connected with everywhere in the creation of Lord God even an ant uh, that is in a different country we can be connected to that place that there is nothing impossible when we become souls and we start to live the life of the soul that we are everywhere and we are omnipresent and all the qualities of God will start to be with us so I will read to you a few poems from Hafiz from my new book. I hope they will intoxicate you. Uh, one of the poems, it is about uh, uh, that uh, the, the woman carrying the, uh, the water on their head, uh, which is a resemblance of us traveling to get love. Um, okay, at this party, I don't want to be the only one here telling all the secrets, filling up the bowls at this party taking all the laughs. I would like you to start putting things on the table that can also feed the soul the way I do. That way we can invite a hell of a lot more friends. It is like yesterday. Yesterday, everybody was putting something on the table of God um, and offering some seva, whether it's mental for Baba Sawanting or singing or poetry or whatever. Well, and then this poem is called Why All This Talk? Why all this talk of the beloved music and dancing and liquid ruby light we can lift in a cup because it is low tide, a very low tide in this age and around most hearts. We are exquis exquisite coral reefs dying when exposed to strange elements. God is the wine ocean we crave, we miss, flowing in and out of our pores. Well, I love when he said we are exquisite coral reefs. You know, the coral reefs, if you change the environment of it, it dies and, and it suffers. And the same way, our soul, when it's not connected to God, when it's not connected to the holy light, when it's not connected to the holy sound, it really suffers. It suffers all the pains that are offered from the, from the negative world, the, all the anger and all the other stuff. Um, and it's not a happy soul. But when it is connected to its source, oh my God, life becomes happy. Life becomes happy. God is the ocean we crave, we miss, flowing in and out of our pores. That when we connect with the Shabd, when we connect with the holy light and sound, God starts flowing from all of our pores. All, when we fill ourselves, when we fill ourselves. Remember yesterday, I gave you the example of the kombucha bottle that, that is tightly closed. When it's really, really tightly closed and there is no air coming inside, then it starts to ferment and fizz. It starts to have a fizz and foam. When you open it, it explodes. Why? Because it, 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 nothing, nothing went inside of it to ruin it. Nothing went inside of it and, and it kept itself locked the same way, the same way when we fill ourselves with God and keep it tight in us. That means we meditate on the holy light and sound. We remember God, but when we don't lose, we don't lose that blessings through the lower chakras. You know what I mean? We don't lose it and it only stays in us. We don't lose it through the eyes by looking at something that is unholy. That means, the, as Jesus said in the Holy Bible, don't let your eyes see something that is not godly. Don't let your ears hear something that is also not godly, that only listen to the master, only see the master with your eyes. And uh, because that's where, that's, where, uh, that's where the five enemies attack us, from our ears, well, some, something we listen, it can make us angry, 
or something we see, it might make us lustful. So we have to take care. We have to be like that kombucha bottle that is very, very tightly and securely closed. It doesn't allow any anything inside that could adulter it. And then what happens? What happens when the time comes that it needs to open? It explodes. It explodes. And the same way us, we explode in God. We explode in love. We explode in God and we explode in, in love. And that is where all the dams break and the floodgates of God starts to pour in us. That there will be a time where we will be so pure and so holy, just like Saint Kabir said. Saint Kabir said that now I became so pure and so holy that God is running after me. God is running after me saying, Kabir, 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 come here, come here, come here. And that same time when we are befit of God and the kingdom of God, when our soul is pure and shiny, when we become, when God makes us so pure, when he does all the job of cleaning and there is nothing left to be clean because even, even if we live in this world, we live in the negative world, we, uh, we get dirty every day, but then with a little meditation, just from regular life, normal life, just like you know, if, if we just in, are in the world and this is the negative world, some things we cannot avoid and they come to our eyes and they come to our ears. When was it? I opened Facebook. Oh, I opened Facebook because I use Facebook for godly stuff and it's all full of saints. But, but also the negativity can attack from there. I opened it and I saw like, uh, I don't want to even say, you know, like uh, somebody uh, some, somebody's head. And I'm like, why is that there? And then like, yeah, it, it disturbed me. It went inside of me and I did not need to see that. And so like, oh my God. And so, yes. So sometimes like negativity attacks us even when we don't want it, when we're not looking at it. It's just the way of this world. So what do we do then when we meditate at night? We listen to the Holy Shabbat. It cleans out everything. It Like if the boat, some water comes in the boat, and you don't clean that water, then at some point more, more water comes, more water comes. At some point that boat starts to sink. That's why daily meditation is a requirement. It's a daily cleaning of the house. It's a daily vacuum of the house. And it takes out everything that is undesirable from this negative world that we did not intend. We did not intend it to come into us, but it comes into us. It infuses itself into us. Then we do the regular daily meditation of three hours or more. That means it cleans the house, it's used to clean the house, and it is used to add to our godly treasure and add love to us. It fills us with godly radiance, with godly love, it fills us with master. And then we can be generous. We can be generous when we have so much blessings from God that pays our suffering in this world. That means we have reached a level where we have cleaned our house, and now we are filling it with divine treasures. Those divine treasures clean the daily things that come inside of us. But then we have so much more to give. We have so much more to give to this world. We give love to this world. We give our master to this world because we are rich. A rich man can give out of his richness. A poor man cannot give anything. I mean man, man or woman cannot give anything because they have nothing in their bank account. But when your bank account is so full of God, so full of godly treasures, then you can be generous to give to others. How can we give our generosity to others? By meditating for them. If you feel somebody of our family that is suffering, we can meditate for them. We can sit in silence for a few seconds or ask master to give us, to give them from our meditation. Either we can meditate for them or ask master to give them from our treasure house of meditation because we have so much overflowing when it becomes overflowing you can give and then and then what happens to them it goes in their account their soul feels it their subconscious self feels it they will be drawn to you and they will be like wow you know because you have given them something that is of the value is of the currency of god and the kingdom of god not of this world. It's not like give them a gift from this world that is under the law of karma, what you sow, so shall you reap. You are giving them a gift. You are giving them a gift from the kingdom of God that is beyond the law of karma because you want nothing back in return. You want, but it's a selfless gift. It goes directly to their subconscious. They feel it and they will start to run after you. 
in the same way when we are rich in god when we have when we are overflowing with our meditation then any anybody who is giving us a problem due to the karma reasons maybe we have gave them a problem in the past lives and they are not nice to us we can ask the Lord to give them from our stock. We can ask the Lord to give them from our stock or we can meditate for them. If you have a problem, like suppose you are going to a court and there are people who are going to meet you in the court, the police and, uh, and uh, because of like an, a ticket or something uh, and the judge. So you sit, sit in meditation and ask the Lord to give that meditation to those people that you're going to meet that day. And then it will pay off your ticket it will pay off all the suffering that you were going to go through and everything will be smooth and everything will be solved in an instant. That is the way we, uh, we can lead our life as long as we are rich in God. If we have nothing to give, then first, first we have to clean the house and fill the house with the godly treasure, fill the house with the wine of God with the treasure of God, then we can be, start to give. So first we have to become rich in God, to become rich in God. Satsang every day makes us rich in God because we are doing seva. Seva directly goes to our bank account. We are sitting as a holy family together, as a holy family in God. We are sitting together. We are doing Simran and God is giving us all, all of us are in the, on the same level. The speaker is being blessed. The one who is attending is being blessed, blessed the same way. We are all sitting on his table. And in, when we all sit on God's table, he gives food to everybody equally. And he, he, and he is a lavish. If you want more, ask for more grace and you shall get it. Ask for more grace and you shall get it. He gives all of us as, as, as much as we ask for. As much as we ask for. We give all what we have to do is keep our attention on master, keep our attention on the perfect one. When our attention is on the perfect one, he keeps filling our plates with the mana of life. He keeps filling our cups with the elixir of life, with the water of life. That is the godly party. That is the godly party that Hafiz says he does not want to be alone to enjoy. He wants everybody to come and sit in his heart. He wants everybody to take a seat close to him and then partake of this manna of life, of this water of life, of this enjoyment, of this bliss. If somebody is happy and if somebody is in bliss and he is a godly person, then he wants everybody to have bliss because that's the qualities of God, the quality of God. He does not want to enjoy by himself. He wants everybody to be like him and he wants everyone to enjoy like him. That is the quality of God. That's why there is oneness with God. Me and my father in the heavens are one and be perfect as your father who's in heavens is perfect. That he, he ordered everybody in, in the Bible, Christ, to become perfect as your father who's in heavens is perfect. Because he wants everybody to enjoy in the same way as he is enjoying. And that is when we sit on God's table, we are all enjoying. And he keeps filling our plates. He keeps filling on our plates at some point, at some point our soul will merge, will merge, and we will be enjoying at the level of God. I can't wait. I can't wait till that, till that happens to us. And we are enjoying on the level of God. I know it's happening. It's going to happen because Ishwar Puri Ji promised me and Santakar promised me that in this life, the highest will be attained. And, I, and, and all of us sitting here, as Dr. Chan said, we're all such condis. So it's not just me, but all of us here at sitting on God's table, we're going to become one. We're going to become one. We're going to be able to say very proudly with our head high in God, me and my father in the heavens are, are one. That day is going to come. We won't say it, of course, because uh, we will be so humble, but it will show through us. It will show through us because... The light will show through us. The divinity will show through us. The light of God cannot be hidden. The light of God cannot be hidden and it's right there. And we will be moving in grace. We will be living in grace. And we will be grace. One with grace that whoever looks at us will be graced. We will become grace. We will become happiness. We will become full enjoyment. And that is in our destiny. All what we have to do is that garbage, that garbage that caused us to suffer for so many lives, the attachments, people of this world, and all our false loves, 
all that will be cut by the master inside of us, by the friend. He will clean everything. He will clean everything, but we have to ask him to do it. We have to ask him to do it. That, okay, this attachment has caused me so much suffering, dear Lord. Now, take it away. Take away anything that takes me away from you. And he will start to drop those baggages one by one. Soul will become light. Soul will become light and traveling easier. Once that big, heavy luggage that we are carrying towards God, that unneeded luggage, the heavy luggage, once that is dropped, oh my God, then the soul feels lighter. You will feel like a big bag of, like a 40 pound bag of rice being offloaded off your bag, off your back. That's how it feels when you drop some attachments of this world. I felt that, I felt that before. When I dropped one of my big attachments, I felt like I could breathe now. Oh my God, like, oh, this bag of rice went off my back. This bag, of, false bag of rice went off my back. Now it's time to be lighter. And this is what master makes us. If we keep asking to become lighter and lighter and lighter, we will become more subtle and more subtle and more subtle. As, and we will reach as the subtleness of God, as God is the subtle of all subtles. His vibration is the highest frequency vibration, the most subtle frequency vibration. Right now, we're not vibrating at that frequency. Slowly, 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 that fre we will have the frequency of God. We will have the frequency of God. We will become subtle and subtle and subtle. We will merge. That is the life of the man. I can't wait. Every day, Every day, every day I get intoxicated just thinking of the future of us when we ferment ourselves in God. When God's promise to us of the kingdom of God is full and the God is fulfilled. And when the, the dams break and the flood gates of the kingdom of God flood us. This, this is when we become brides. When we are, when the day of marriage of the bride, the day of marriage. The day we are all now like brides of God waiting to be married. And at some point we will be married. The, the, the real marriage in the kingdom of God, the real marriage in the kingdom of God is when we merge and we become one. That is the marriage. That is the marriage. Okay. Oh, did I read poems? Oh, should I read another one? Because of our wisdom. In many parts of this world, water is scarce and precious. People sometimes have to walk a great distance, then carry heavy jugs upon their heads. Because of our wisdom, we will travel far for love. All movement is a sign of thirst. I love that. All movement is a sign of thirst. Most speaking really says, many, most speaking, really says, I am hungry to know you. I am hungry to know you, Lord God. Wow. Every desire of your body is holy. Every, remember, every desire of your body is holy. Every desire of your body is holy, dear ones. Why wait until you are dying to discover that divine truth? That means find God now. Not later, no. <laughs> and enjoy. And all of our desires, even our lower desires, they are holy too, because everything is a divine show, remember? Everything, even our lower desires that have to be for, like that maybe God fulfilled them or sublimated them or fulfilled them in the past lives or is fulfilling them for us, whatever. Everything is holy because everything is made by him and it is all his divine show. From A to Z, is the negative and the positive is in God. And every, okay, cool. So, thank you, Master, for the seva. <laughs> and uh, um, now uh, I will. Uh, I see Isaac there. So nice to see you <laughs> on my screen. Um, and now we will continue on, and I will play our dear sister Tina. And uh, she's going to do the job G for us. I'm looking forward to hear what she has to say. So let's listen to Tina.
Hi, beautiful holy family. Thank you, dearest beloved Babaji, for another opportunity for the Seva. With your divine blessings and the blessings of the Sangat and my brothers and sisters on this holy path, I will continue the Seva. As always, my reference points are the Japji by Sant Kripal Singh Ji Maharaj. We will start with the recitation of the Mool Mantra, which is the beginning of Japji Sahib, followed by the recitation of the stanzas 11, 12, and 13, first in Punjabi and then translation in English. Before that, we will be reading the introduction and the ev in introduction, we will read evidences from the various regions. Before I start, as always, Mool Mantra. Ik on kar, sat naam, karta puruk, nirpau, nirver, akal murat, ajuni sehbhang, gur prashad, Jab, Ad such, Jugad such, Heb he such, Nanak Hosi he such. And now the introduction. Evidences from the various religions. Christianity. Saint John has stated in his Gospel In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. By the Word of Lord were the heavens made. Again, He spoke and it was done. Upholding all things by the word of his power, Hebrews 1.3. The grass withered, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Isaiah 40.8. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Plasm 119.89. St. Paul said, For the word of God is quick, living, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and interests of heart. Hinduism According to the Hindu theo theological books, the whole creation was made through Nad. They also refer to it as Akash Bani, voice coming f down from the heavens. We have references to it even in the Vedas, the ancient scriptures of the world. We read of it in the Upanishads, as for instance, the Nad Bind Upanishads which deal with the matter in a very lucid manner. The Hat Yoga Pradipika also speaks of the sound principle. He has taken the support of the word, the melodious tune, Chando Yoga Upanishta. Let yogis sit on Siddh Asan and while practicing the Vaishnavi Mudra, he should hear the sound through his right ear. Nad bent Upanishta. By communion with the word, he will become deaf to the external sounds and will attain the Turiyapad or a state of exipoise within a fortnight. Nad bent Upanishta. First, the murmuring sounds resembling those of the waves of the oceans the fall of rain and the running rivulets and then dhari will be heard intermingled with the sounds of bell and conch etc. 
Madame Blavitsky, the founder of Theosophical Society, in her book, Voice of the Silence, states that several sounds are heard when holding communion. The first is like the nightingale's sweet voice, chanting a parting song to its mate. The next resembles the sound of silver symbols of the dhyanis awakening the twinkling stars. It is followed by the plain melodies of the ocean's spirit, imprisoned in the conch cell, which in turn gives place to the chant of Veena. The melodious flute-like symphony is then heard. It changes into a trumpet blast, vibrating like the dull rumbling of a thundercloud. The seventh swallows all other sounds. They die and then are heard no more. Mohammedanism among the Sufis, Muslim Sufis, it is known as Sultan ul Azgar, the king of prayers. Another order of Sufis call, call it Saut e Sarmadi, the divine song. They also call it Nidai Asam, Asmani, the sound coming down from the heavens, Kalame Kadim, the ancient sound and kalma or word. The 14 regions were made by the kalma, the word. Khwaja Hafiz, a divine says, a great divine says, from the turret of the heaven, a call bids thee home, but the fallen into the snares thou listenest not, but fallen from the snares thou listenest not, no one knows where the mansion of the beloved lies, but sure enough, the chiming of the bells proceed therefrom. Again, take the stopcock from thy ears and hear thou the voice of emancipation coming to thee. Attach not to the material world. The elixir of life is showering from above. The beat of love while sounding in the heavens sounds blessings to the souls of the devotees. Maulana Rumi in his Masnavi says, Grow not sceptical, but attune thyself to the sound coming down from the heavens. Thy soul shall be have revelation from afar. What are these but glimpses of the unrevealed? Were I to speak of these sweet melodies, even the dead shall rise from their graves. Again, rise above the horizon, O brave soul, and hear the melodious song coming from the highest heaven. Prophet Muhammad says, The voice of God comes unto my ears as any other sound. Shah Niaz, another Muslim devotee, says, Soul is the will and the secret of God. Its meditation is carried without the help of tongue and palate. Alas, thou art stuck fast in the physical bondage and do not hear the holy sound of God. My beloved is speaking to thee all the while, but woe to thee for thou heard it not the voice. The whole universe is resounding with the sound and thou hast only to open the door of thine ear. For opening the ear, it is sufficient to stop hearing the outer sounds. If you do this, you will hear the perpetual and unending sound. It is infinite and has no beginning nor end. And on account of that, it is called unhug, without any limits. Without this word, the eternal sound, an infinite expression of the infinite, the world could not have come into existence. Hold communion with the melodious sound and lose yourself in it, O wise man. Kabir Sahab says, Without the word, sound, or eternal song, the soul sees not where would she go. As she cannot fathom the mystery of the word, she is wandering from place to place.
mind hankereth after evils through the word and the master restraineth it, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. We will continue with the introduction in our next uh, seva and now the stanzas. Stanza 11 in Punjabi first. Suniye sarake sara guna ke ga suniye sek eet patsa suniye ande pave ra suniye haat hove asga nanak pakta sara sada vikas suniye tuk pap kanas stanza 12 mane ki gati kahi na jaye je ko kahe piche pachtaye kagat kalam na likhan har mane ke bahe karan vichar Esa naam niranjan hoi, jeko man ma jane man koi. Stanza 13. Mane surat hove man buddh, mane sagal pavan ki sudh. Mane moot chota na khai, mane janam ke saath na jai. Esa nanak, esa naam niranjan hoi, jeko man jane man koi. And now, Translation in English. One dives deep into the ocean of virtues by hearing the name of God. Mortal becomes a scholar, a spiritual guide, and an emperor by hearing the name of God. The blind sees the way by hearing the name of God. Unfathomable Lord becomes fathomable by hearing the name of God. Satgur Nanak says, that the true saints always remain blissful. Diseases and sins are destroyed by hearing the name of God. State of mind of the devotee who obeys the Lord cannot be described. One trying to describe it will have to repent afterwards. There is neither the paper and pen nor the writer who can sit and describe the state of the devotee who obeys God. Such is the pure name of God, unaffected by Maya. One obeying God realizes the bliss given by such obedience in his mind. On obeying God, consciousness, divine knowledge and understanding are acquired. Knowledge of all the spheres is acquired by obeying God. Believer in God does not get blows of death on his face. One who obeys God will not be caught by the God of death. Such is the pure name of God. By obeying God realizes the bliss given by, the, by such obedience of his mind. By communion with the word, one becomes the abode of all virtues. By communion with the word, one becomes a sheikh, a peer, and a true spiritual king. By communion with the word, the spirituality, blind, find their way to realization. By communion with the word, one crosses beyond the limit, limitless ocean of illusionary matter. O Nanak, his devotees live in the perpetual ecstasy for the word washes away all the sin and sorrow. None can describe the condition of one who has made God's will his own. Whosoever tries to do so must realize his folly. No supply of paper, pen or scribe can ever describe the state of such a one. Oh, great is the power of the word, but few there be that know it. By practice of the word, one rises into universal consciousness and develops right understanding. By practice of the word, one develops clairvoyance and transvision of the whole creation. By practice of the word, one is freed from sorrow and suffering. By practice of the word, one shall not go to Yama, the god of the death, after his death. Oh, great is the power of the word, but few there be that know it. Nanak, having tried to describe the four 
describe the fruit of communion with the word in the preceding four stanzas now goes on to tell about the state of one who has attuned his will with the divine will which cannot be described as his will is beyond description the idea of the controlling power in this world may be said to be the divine will god himself is the formless but he assumed form he became the word or noun it was from this word that the various planes of creation sprang into existence one below the other he who practices the word that is withdraws his soul from the body and lets it be drawn up by the power of the divine music of the word can progress from one spiritual plane to another until he reaches the very source and becomes As he one proceeds on the journey his mental and spiritual horizons widen his soul is cleansed of its past sins and freed from the binding chains of karma it thus transcends suffering and escapes from the wheel of transmigration once one has attained true salvation one can help others on the path as well great indeed is the power of the word but unfortunately there are very few who know it thank you my dearest holy family for giving me this opportunity thank you baba ji for all your blessings and giving me this opportunity for the seva i humbly uh, ask for forgiveness as i have made so many mistakes while in my recitation while reading it please forgive me and with your blessings and with baba ji's blessings i will continue the seva next week thank you so much holy family thank you baba ji thank you so much dear sister tina i enjoyed every moment and i enjoyed what the shab does for us what nam does for us and how it transforms us and uh um um tina sent me uh, something in the morning and it says it's so beautiful it shows like a golden sky showering and it says an awake heart is like a sky that pours light an awake heart is like a sky that pours light and it's just a beautiful picture and it just made me so happy an awake heart is like a sky that pours light that's from Hafiz, um, and uh, thank you for sending it to me, dear sister Tina, and thank you for your seva. We all appreciate it. Um, and now, our dear sister Shalina um, and from Hong Kong, I think, and she's going to do a reading for us. And the Shalina, her voice, she's so talented. She's like a star when it comes to uh, reading. It, it, she absorbs all of us. She reads in a very beautiful way. So I'm looking forward for her reading. Um. Thank you so much to the Seva um, Committee for enabling me to perform Seva for my master as well as to you. Today's topic is keep your gaze fixed on the master and how relevant it is for us. Tulsi Sahib was a mystic with a Hindu background who lived in Hathras in 18th century India. He wrote many poems about the inner spiritual path that leads to God realization. Among them are a few devotional poems that he had addressed to Sheikh Taqi, a Muslim saint. Sheikh Taqi was on his pilgrimage to Mecca and happened to pitch his tent in the neighborhood of Tulsi Sahib's residence. In this poem, Tulsi Sahib is explaining to Sheikh Taqi what it means to follow a spiritual master and what a disciple needs to do. Fix your gaze on the master who has offered you his hand. 
Do not be neglectful or give up if you wish to behold the splendor of your beloved. Mystics and saints urge us to keep the purpose of human life in mind and to focus on that goal every day of our entire life. What is the purpose of life? The main purpose of life is to realize God. This privilege the Lord has bestowed only on human beings. Everything else we have been getting every time we have come into this world in any form, in any species. But the privilege of going back to the Father can only be achieved in human life. So we should always be mindful of our destination and try to follow the spiritual path which leads us back to Him. While working out our destiny, our karmic accounts or adjustments, our duties and responsibilities, we should not forget the end and purpose for which we have come into this world. Here, Huzur is reminding us that whatever life brings us as a result of our karma, of actions that we have performed during previous lives, the situations we find ourselves in, the people we meet, the responsibilities we get, the assets we require, are all a result of that. Now, we cannot change this karma, this destiny. It is the path of life that we have to follow with all of the associated ups and downs. Mystics and saints, however, emphasize that there is more to life as a human being than just working out that karma. This life gives us the opportunity to realize the supreme, the divine, to meet our beloved of the soul, and thus transcend this world and its cycle of birth and death. And for that purpose, this life form has been given to us. Saints say, face that destiny and then also try and find your way out of this world. Now, how can we find our way? By unceasingly focusing our attention on the messenger of God, your master, who offers us his guidance and help to find our way back in the Most High. So, for the way to God is unfathomable, it is a path that we do not know, that we find, that we ourselves cannot find, and above all, that we cannot oversee because it is different from what we think or envision. Hence, Tulsi Sahib says, if you want to see the purpose of life fulfilled and realize the divine, then fix your gaze on your master who has offered you his hand. Do not be neglectful or give up if you wish to behold the splendor of your beloved. He lovingly advises us to do our utmost to involve master with every step we take on this path of life and to keep him in mind in everything that we do. We need to do this so that we don't get lost in what's going on around us and we won't be deceived by our own thoughts, ideas, feelings, and emotions, or be upset by what happens to us. The master knows the way. He knows the ups and downs we have to go through, and he is only too happy to guide us through them. Hence, he reaches out his hand to help us. It's up to us to let ourselves be taken by the hand, to put our hand in his, and to surrender to his guidance. It's up to us to do our very best to hold his hand once he has initiated us by following his instructions and focusing our attention on the true form of the master, the Shabbat, at the eye center through the daily practice of meditation. Now, during all those moments in the day that we need not involve our mind in the work that we do, we repeat in our mind the sacred names that he has given at the time of the initiation as much as possible throughout the day. Whatever you may do in this world, keeping your master within you is meditation. Whether you are properly sitting or just sitting quietly full of love and devotion of the master or hearing the sound, seeing the light, whatever you are doing, even worldly work, 
if your master is with you in your mind, in your heart, if all of your dealings conform to the teachings, to the commands of the master, then you are with the master. That is why we say that Sankmat is not only meditation, it is the way of life. We should have to mold ourselves to that way of life so that we are always with our master in all activities of our life and we don't forget him anytime, anywhere. Tulsi Sahib writes, don't be negligent of this. Don't let yourself be distracted by all of the issues that pass during the day. For only when our attention is one pointedly focused on the master, on the Shabbat, then there is nothing in our hearts but a deep desire to meet the beloved of our soul. Will he reveal himself to us inside at the eye center in all his greatness? It sounds so easy not to get distracted from the purpose for which we are born and to keep our attention focused inwards on the Shabbat instead of the outward of the world. But it is the most difficult assignment or task that can be given to us. This is because our mind is so accustomed to orienting itself outward. It is so easily seduced by worldly things and not easily withdrawn from them. Great Master says, Mind is not a thing that can be switched off and on at will. It cannot be taken away from its routine course in spite of one's best efforts in a day, a month, or a year. It's a lifelong struggle. And those who have undergone this struggle and who are engaged in it understand what it is to conquer the mind. It is attached to the outside world with ropes, double ropes, triple ropes, manifold ropes, and has been held by these chains so long that it does not feel the irksomeness of its bonds. It likes them instead. If it were an easy affair, Guru Nanak would not have sat on pebbles for 12 years. Christ would not have spent 19 years in the Tibetan hills and Swamiji himself would not have contemplated in a solitary dark back room for 17 years. Now there's a story of tales of the mystic East that gives us an even stronger impression of how difficult it is to control the mind. Guru Vashist once said to his disciple Ramachandra, if I was told that someone had lifted the Himalayas, I may, for a moment, assume that there is such a person in the world. If someone were to say he swallowed the sea, incredible though it may seem, I may, for an instant, believe him too. If someone were to assert that he had tamed the winds of the world, he is not to be taken seriously, but for a split second, I might agree with him. However, if someone were to boast that he's controlled his mind, I would never believe him. The mighty force of the mind is not easily controlled. So it's not an easy task as it seems to be an impossible one. Nevertheless, mystics and saints like Tulsi Sahib impress upon us to do our utmost to keep our gaze, our attention focused on the Shabd at the eye center and to hold the hand of the master in every action we perform, not leaving it through negligence. Every effort we make gives the master the opportunity to guide us and shower his grace upon us. And it is this grace that will lead us to our beloved. Huzur says, his grace is never lacking if our effort is sincere and honest. We wouldn't have been given this human life. We wouldn't have been on the path at all. We wouldn't meet a mystic at all, but for his grace. So when we, when he has marked us to be a part of a certain fold of a certain master, he doesn't withhold his grace after that. He is more anxious than we are. So his grace is always there, but we have to do our duty. We just can't look at we just can't look to the grace without even doing our duty. 
we should do our best and his grace is always there. As Master Jagat Singh says, we must strive hard to subdue the mind and put in our every effort to drive away the evil qualities that overpower us. But if after struggling very hard, we still find that we have not advanced a single foot on this long journey, we should not be disheartened. Master knows well with our feebles hand and feet that we should not be able to accomplish this journey even if we were to go on traveling for a hundred thousand years. He wants to impress upon us that unless the Lord's grace intervenes, no one can walk on this path of immortality alone. When we collapse and fall and have no strength left to struggle further, the, master, the Master's loving kindness and grace will carry us forward as a loitering child is carried in the arms by its mother. That's what the Master does. He will carry us towards our beloved after we have put in the part that is within our capacity. That seemingly insignificant part is so essential. That's why the Masters emphasize so strongly that we need to make an effort wholeheartedly. By doing this, we will, all, we will come to gradual submission. A writer on Buddhism discusses the importance of devotion in this process of surrender. The Bhaktic trend eliminates in faith all reliance of self-power, all reliance on one's own ability to plan and control one's own life and salvation. Surrender in faith involves a high degree of extinction of separate selfhood, partly because one does not rely on oneself or one's own power, and partly because one sees the futility of all conscious and personal efforts and allows oneself to be carried to salvation. Now, elementary modesty lets us perceive that any merit we may claim compares as nothing with that of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and with the power of their help, all pride in our intellect, all pride in this purity of the heart sets up a self against others. If the intellect is seen as futile, the heart as corrupt, that self is deflated. The grace of the absolute alone can carry us across and our own personal schemes and endeavors are quite trivial then. Bulsi Sahib continues his poem to Sheikh Taki by saying, his mercy will protect you till you arrive at his court. There is no need for fear or worry. Go straight and reach there, for this is the master's decree. Mansur, Sharmad, Buali, Shams and Maulana, they all followed the same path with firm resolve in their hearts and reached their destination. Bulsi Sahib mentions certain saints well known among Muslims, including Mansur, Sarmad, Shamsi Tabri, and Maulana Rumi, all attained God realization by walking this path. So take your chance is the message. The master has taught you the method of meditation. Don't delay, go straight to your destination. Be determined in that. Be determined in gazing at him again and again, following him and his instructions. Even if you don't understand the course of the way, trust him completely and his grace will lead you to the beloved of your soul without fear or danger on the road. The master, the Shab, the Naam, guides you and protects you as expressed by Guru Arjan Dev. On that path of endless miles, God's Naam provides you with sustenance. On that path of intense, blinding darkness, God's Naam is your guiding light. On that path where no one recognizes you, God's Naam stands by you as your identity. Where the sun is ablaze with scorching heat, God's Naam is the cooling shade over you. Says Nanak, O oh my mind, 
When you are tormented by thirst, God's Nam, Nam will shower its nectar on you. Tulsi Sahib continues, Love is the destination of this path, and reaching there is not difficult, for the one who removes all difficulty stands before you and has given you his hand. Guru Arjan Dev Ji and Tulsi Sahib both know, acknowledge that the path to union with the beloved is not an easy one. Traveling the spiritual path takes a lot of effort. We will have to continue to work hard to reach the destination of love. And at the same time, there is comfort and confirmation that reaching that destination, that love is not difficult because the one who resolves difficulties is with us and has offered us his hand. He is the opener and the solver, the easer of all that is locked, tied and hardened. There are states and problems that are tied in his knot. There are hardened things that cannot see through and pass through. There are also hearts tied in a knot with sadness, minds tied up in doubts and questions they are unable to answer. Master opens them all. He opens all the gates. He has the key to the treasure of sacred secrets that are in the hearts of man. God's very known house. Stand at that gate of God's mercy and knock on the door of the one who resolves all difficulties. He certainly will come and open it sooner or later. Pray unceasingly always. You are poor, he is, he is rich. You are in need, he is the satisfier of need. You are in the dark, he is the light. Tulsi Sahib ends this poem by pointing out to Sheikh Taki that the way to God is an inner way. It is the way of the Shabd, the true name, the secret hidden in the heart of every human being. It is the name that can only be experienced, not pronounced. The name that leads to most, to the most high, to God, to the beloved of our soul. Tulsi's advice is to cherish it within when you experience it. Don't talk about it. It's the treasure of treasures, the most precious experience that can be given to you. It's the secret way to union with our beloved of your soul. By following it, the purpose of your life will be fulfilled and your journey through creation will come to an end. Thank you. Thank you, dear Shalina. That was amazing. And I loved when you said, keep your attention on the messenger of God. And Master's picture is so beautiful that was used for your talk. I loved it. And I kept looking at his eyes um, while you are talking. So it's, it's very beautiful and wonderful. Thank you so much. So now we can um, meditate for a couple of minutes. And then uh, we can listen to our Holy Father, Ishwar Puriji and enjoy meditation together.
put your attention there if your attention is even half withdrawn from this physical body you will see that person you will see that being you will see your guru your master when you begin to see you can add to it first by imagination which is the very thing you used to start with we start with imagination now imagination can be of two kinds one which is recall of something that happened for example i met my friend yesterday who was standing outside this door and I, when i try to remember i can still see his face i am imagining but i am not imagining something new i am imagining what i saw and that's real the person i saw was real so when i imagine i am getting back the real person if he was walking he's still walking in my recall if he was talking he's still talking in my recall when we have a living person who we imagine that living person you imagine as one who did what you imagine shortly after that the living person starts walk saying things more than what he said when you saw him and suddenly becomes alive and then becomes your friend and it it takes a little time it will take take some while to establish this experience it comes and goes in the beginning but if you have patience and you can develop that ultimately it's instantaneous you close your eyes remember there he is you talk have a nice conversation and then inside walk fly fly anywhere you like ultimately it becomes so normal that you don't have to close your eyes you could just see him there around you just like you see living people you suddenly find he is more alive from inside out than he is from outside in when he was outside as a physical body and you thought of him it was not so alive when he is not there in the outside body and he is alive inside he is not only alive inside he can you see him outside alive also you can walk feel that you are walking with him you can hold his hand in physical body outside you can be driving your car and he is sitting next to you in the seat that visual experience where you can see the power of a perfect living master who has manifested himself as part of your experience of life that's the most wonderful thing that i have found on this path other things are all right you can see stars and moon in the sky you can go and see beautiful scenes and you can see many colors inside and you can even fly outside you can see the whole sky full of light all right so what it's just an experience like this is an experience sometimes the movie producers are making better experiences than some people get in meditation that's what a great thing but to have a friend who's always with you and takes part uh, participates takes part in your activities takes part in your joy takes part in your humor cracks jokes with you what do you think of that experience it is totally different him him a perfect living master manifesting himself in you and you are reaching that point to be able to imagine and, and eventually manifest the actual form and being a permanent friend of that person inside you i don't see anything like that anywhere i have studied so many yogas studied so many spiritual paths so many methods of going and understanding what is inside so many methods of understanding consciousness intellectually and otherwise there is nothing like having a true friend manifest who you can love and be loved by and always have a friend forever and that friendship is not absolutely not for short time it's not for this lifetime it is not connected with this body it outlasts this body and you will find that that kind of friendship cannot be found except when you are initiated by a perfect giving master who manifests himself in you at the time of naam daan or initiation so that's a very big very big advantage of this particular path which i am sharing with you i am recommending it also because of my experience i believe you are all seekers of the same thing i believe we are all traveling on the same path towards our true home and that is why i am sharing this with you and backing it up with my experience that that is the best thing i could find and i hope you will take advantage of it and i will continue this 
process of explaining to you further what to do. It's best to know step one. No use discussing all the five, ten steps. You should first practice step one. If we are proficient and, and good in step one, we will automatically be good in step two. If you fail in step one, no use discussing step two. People want to have intellectual discussions of higher regions and higher consciousness and so on. It's all intellectual mental game. It's all mental game of words. We exchange words and one, one upmanship. One, I know more than you, you know more. I can explain better than you. These are all intellectual things, games of ego, games of I-ness, and they are not really worthwhile on a spiritual journey like this where we want to find our true home. So let me thank you all for uh, joining me. I will take up a few questions now. If uh, Rishi is ready. Dear Master, I miss you a lot and love you a lot. My question is, whenever I miss you or I am in any problem or if I am suffering, do you get to know? You are physically far away but close to my heart. There are so many that you have to look after. But how do you know what is going through everyone's mind? Interesting question. Why it's interesting for me is because I asked the same question once, long ago. I asked the same question from Great Master. I said, Master, you say that you are inside us and when we want to ask any question, we are in trouble, we want help, you will help us from inside. Do you have any knowledge outside also? that we are doing this thing or is it all our in own internal thing? One, one master, his name was Baba Fakir Chak, from Usharpur. He made a statement in his satsang. He said, masters know nothing. They are ordinary human beings like us. But they have this gift that they can create their image inside and the true master is inside us. That is why, don't think that the master outside and inside is the same. The master inside, which is part of your own self, is created by your own consciousness, is the true master. The outside is a replica, an outside image of that master. So, the outside master acts according to what is happening in the inside master. He gave that example, Fakir Chand gave that example, that masters as physical beings are not all-knowing. That they, so I, I, I was very uh, interested in that statement of Baba Fakir Chand because he was our neighbor when my father was teaching as a professor in Usharpur. We used to meet him frequently. He was a very enlightened person. So at one time I had to ask him the same question, which I had asked great master once, about whether the master in physical body knows everything. And Baba Fakir Chand said, of course. They are not different, but the outside has to behave like an ordinary person, unknowing. Because if he says he knows outside, what will happen? Nobody will go inside. Everybody will run after the outside person. Therefore, it's appropriate for a master to tell, he knows nothing, go inside and find out from your true master inside. So it's very appropriate behavior of a perfect living master to do that. Now, this is what he explained, and I understood it, that the masters want us to meditate and find the truth inside. Otherwise, we are running after illusions. Master's outer form is part of the illusion. When you die, everything dissolves, including the form of the master. But what does not dissolve is the inner form of the master. Therefore, it's a very appropriate thing for a master to say, I don't know what is happening, and even if he knows, now the question is, if he really knows, then how does he operate? One physical person, if he knows, has got so many initiates, so many disciples. He has initiated each one of them 
and told them, I am with you. I have manifested myself with you. Any problem you have, you can talk to me. And there are 1,000 people sitting there. And master is in all 1,000. How can one physical person know what is happening to 1,000 people? I had to find some appropriate language to explain how masters work. In, a, in America, in one of my talks, I explained this. And the explanation I gave was taken from the manual for ma masters. So I just picked up from there and said, the masters use what is called a clone. A clone is a replica of the master. And they make a clone and put that clone of themselves in each person they initiate. But they are in constant touch with the clone. They never disconnect with the clone. Clone continuously, all the time, sends messages what is happening inside the disciple. And therefore the physical form of the master at all time know it. But they don't have to use it for interaction with the disciple. The interaction should be ordinary human beings as friends. Supposing we came to know that another human being who is being a friend of ours knows all our thoughts. And sometimes our thoughts are very ugly, you know. In spite of the, try, even if we try to think very nice things, once in a while some naughty thoughts, thoughts creep in. And if we know he's reading my thoughts, we'll hardly have any friendship with that person. So if you have a creepy thought and say, Master, did you see what I thought? He said, what was that? We feel very comfortable. Thank God. So you have to balance, balance all these things. The truth is that the master in his awareness knows everything. He knows. And he, in his physical form, acts like he's just an ordinary person like us and knows nothing more than what we know. And therefore, we can be have very free with such a master as external physical friendship. As external physical friendship, we can be very free. When we go to this form inside, he can be very different. He can show his full knowledge. He can show everything and give all the answers. Inside, he won't say, I don't know what it is. Outside, he will. But this is part of a single plan. It's not different. So once you know what this cloning system is, a master can produce a thousand million clones and take care of them and be in touch with all of them. If we don't understand how a master can through clones be in touch with all of them, take the digital world and in one little chip you can have a connection continuously working with not millions but billions of points. So it's not very difficult for the consciousness of a master to be in touch with all of them. So in the physical body, in the physical relationships, he will pretend he knows as little or as more as you do, as your friend does. And that sustains the friendship at the physical level. This uh, uh, system works beautifully. And sometimes we think that the master may be using a clone, but does not know what's happening. Somebody complains. He says, master, I had this problem. Oh, let me check with the clone. It's not like that. Then it's not a clone. Then we are separating that uh, clone from the master. Clone means identical copy. It's an identical copy of the master. And the awareness of the clone, because clone is inside, physical part of the master is very far away. Physical master is so far away, has no time for anybody, and we hardly get to see him for a little while. But the clone is always there. Therefore, the clone acts more aggressively in being our friend. And the master in the physical form, with his remoteness, acts like ordinary human being. It's a great combination. It's good to know. And then sometimes, if we begin to really suspect, supposing we say, no, 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 Baba Fakir Chand was more right than we are explaining now. He really did not know anything. And masters really don't know anything. And this mind, our doubting mind, which can doubt anything, begins to doubt. Master really doesn't know. It's just a theory that they made up of clone and all that. Then suddenly one day he'll spring a surprise by telling you something which you only know. How did master know that? It is just one little example he will give and put you back on track. No, 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 he knows. But he won't say so because he's a friend of mine. So from time to time, 
these experiences will also take place. So it's, I think it's a good game to tell you the truth. There is no better game you can play than the game you play with your master. Don't put the master on a pedestal. Don't put him high away from yourself. The master is your friend. Friend here in the physical form and friend inside. And he will share your life like you share with any friend. He will share your joy, your sorrows, your suffering. He'll suffer with you. He'll feel sorry when needs to be sorry. And he'll fly with you. He will dance with you. He will eat with you. It's a very different relationship once you establish the form of the master inside. And that's the beauty of this. Nam Dan by a perfect master. That's the relationship that's created. Dear master, I want to know if the mas uh, if my master leaves his body before I could establish his radiant form, what will happen? Please answer in Hindi or Punjabi. Our question is in English. He's requested an answer in Punjabi or Hindi. So I think I should first translate the question into Punjabi and then answer it. A swal puchhe hai ki jay sada sat guru apne shreer nu chhad jave or o da nuri sroop ajay sade andar nahi aya ta phir ki hoega? Aina swal hai. Kaiya ne puchhe hai swal. Kyunke मेरे सतगुरु ने मैं किया सी कि जड़ी सब तो जरूरी गल है खास तौर पर जे थोड़ा गुरु अगे उम्र वाला हो सियाण हो पता हो क्या बहुते चर नहीं रहना रहता गुरु किसी टाइम तक रह सकता मेरे सतगुर नब्बे साल की उम्र तक रहे बहुते गुरु उस तो पहला चले गए तो जे गुरु सू कहो मैं तो हूँ बेर बर मेरी हैगी उम्र हो गई है तो तुम्हें की करना चाहिए तो गुरु कहें जिनी जल्दी हो सके इन्ना भजन कर लो कि नूरी स्वरूप अंदर आ जाए जे वो आ जाएगा फिर जो तो गुरु शरीर छड़ दे तो नहीं पता लगेगा कि छड़ के चला गया तो लगेगा इतें ही है थोड़े तो नाल ही ए लगेगा कि हाँ बहर की जी मित्रता से बहर दी खत्म हो गई अंदर दी खत्म हुई और अंदर की मित्रता चलती रही इस पिछे ए बड़ा समूथ ट्रांजिशन होएगा कि तुम्हें पता नहीं लगेगा कि बहर तो शरीर चला गया वो नाल ही जो तुम जाओगे समझ संस्कार कर जाओगे अपने गुरु के शरीर के तो वह नाल ही खड़ा तुम्हें कहेगा यह तो एवं शरीर से तुम गुरु ने देखोगे कि वह जिंदा है तो वास्ते जिंदा होएगा बहर खड़ा ए नहीं कि थोड़े अंदर भजन कर खड़ा बहर खड़ा थोड़े सामने इस पिछे फिर तुम्हें कभी नहीं लगेगा कि गुरु चला गया तो इस पिछे बड़ी जरूरी गल दसी सवाल से कि जे गुरु पहले ही मर जाए पहले ही चले जाए तुम अजय जिंदा हो और अंदर थोड़े दर्शन होए नहीं नूरी स्वरूप आया नहीं फिर तुम की करोगे तड़फ तड़फ के कहोगे गुरु चला गया मैं कला रह गया कहते नहीं जो गुरु नाम दान तुम दिता है वो नूरी स्वरूप थोड़े अंदर उस लिए आ जाता है यह नहीं कि हौली हौली आएगा पिछले बाद नूरी स्वरूप उस लिए अंदर आ जाता है जो तुम भजन सिमरन कर दौ तो नूरी सरीफ नजर आ जाए ए नहीं मतलब कि उस लिए आया नूरी सरूप तो नाम दान दे वक्त आ जाता अंदर जे थोड़ी उस वे तवजो लग जाए वो किसी किसी लग जाती है जे जिनी थोड़ी तवजो बहर है उन्ना ही टाइम लगता है उन्होंने अंदर खिंचन का पर जे जे आदमी ने बहुत ही तवजो नहीं लगाई पिंड च रहा अपने एक घर से रहा कुछ कम ही नहीं करता वो भगति बड़ी वो प्यार भगती बड़ी है नाम दान मिलता उन्होंने उस लिए प्रतक्ष हो जाता है गुरु कई केस मैं देखे अपने गुरु न देखे इस करके ना समझो कि गुरु ने उस वेले आना जो तुम देखोगे गुरु तो थोड़े अंदर नूरी स्वरूप उस वेले पा दिता है जो नाम दिता है जब तुम हौली हौली करके जो थोड़ी तवजो अंदर जाती है उन्होंने देख दौ और जो देखते भी हो तो कभी आंदा है कभी जाता है वो नहीं गुरु नहीं आता जाता गुरु तो उतें ही है थोड़ी तवजो नहीं अजय वो उत्ते पूरी तरह कायम हो इस करके जिस अपनी तवजो पूरी कर लोगे वो आ जाएगा सो कोई फिक्र ना करो कि जे थोड़े तो गुरु की डैथ पहला हो गई वो पहला चला गया ज्यादा भजन करो वो बाद 
ਤਾਂਕਿ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਜਲਦੀ ਹੋ ਸਕੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਨੂਰੀ ਸਰੂਪ ਮਿਲ ਜਾਵੇ ਸੋ ਫਿਕਰ ਦੀ ਕੋਈ ਗੱਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਨੂਰੀ ਸਰੂਪ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਹੈਗਾ ਉੱਥੇ ਇਫ ਸਤ ਸੰਗੀ ਦਸ ਨਾਮ ਸਿਮਰਨ ਰੈਗੂਲਰਲੀ ਬਟ ਐਜ਼ ਹੀ ਗਰੋਸ ਓਲਡ ਐਂਡ ਹਿਸ ਮੈਮਰੀ ਫੇਲਸ ਹਿਮ ਐਂਡ ਕੈਨੋਟ ਰਿਮੈਂਬਰ ਦ ਸਿਮਰਨ ਵਰਡਸ ਵਾਟ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਕੇਸ ਕੈਨ ਹੀ ਰਾਈਟ ਦ ਸਿਮਰਨ ਵਰਡਸ ਫॉर ਹਿਮ ਟੂ ਰੀਡ ਐਂਡ ਟੂ ਰੀਡ ਦ ਸਿਮਰਨ the question is if a satsangi does naam simran regularly but when he gets old his memory is losing he can't remember even the words of simran then is it appropriate to write the words of simran and give him to repeat the answer is yes no harm if uh, nowadays we can't remember everything so we use our iphones and they we record they tell us we use paper to write mem- memorize things which we forget with heavy pressure of modern civilization we can't remember everything so we use every kind of aid to help us remember things by writing it out by somebody else reminding us so there's no harm in telling a person if you have forgotten the simran the best thing is because we give a privacy to the words we give confidentiality to the words by saying don't share with somebody because by sharing words of simran you are losing the in objectivity of the words and making it subjective that you you will know this word these are your words so that is why there is a little restriction imposed on your sharing words so it is best that the words be shared between initiates that means one person with namdan can certainly tell the words to another person with namdan if that person is forgetting those words that's perfectly normal but it is not necessary it is normal to do that but if you have gur bhakti love and devotion for your for your master you are beyond words you don't need them you don't even need similar if you are gur bhakti become such that your mind cannot interfere it's the mind game with the mind if the mind is still creating doubt you have to do more meditation but if the mind is kept aside and the love from your soul has overridden the mind and mind cannot interrupt it no similar is necessary no words are necessary and that itself will take you to your true home and nothing is lost so it is really a path of love and devotion further supposing a person who gets old he cannot remember the words of simran but he can hear the shabd he can hear the sound inside then the sound is good enough also need not repeat these words so all these are possibilities but do not emphasize that the words are going to carry you very far words are temporary but the simran can be used to create the experience of the sound and the sound when sound comes you can drop the simran all together if somebody can close eyes and hear the sound simran becomes unnecessary then simran should only be used when you want to attack something which is negative and is trying to bother you then you simran it, it repels the negative uh, entities or powers around you so you can just go with the sound but if you are in gur bhakti you don't even need that when you are unshakable faith in your guru and that's kind of devotion coming from you no meditation is necessary how are you master um, missed you a lot so that's it <laughs> that that was it. actually i think that's a that's like a collective question thing from a lot of people sitting here when somebody misses somebody what is it a sign of it's a sign of love you don't miss somebody if you don't love that person uh, sometimes you want to miss something they're different a man told me he misses his wife's cooking as much as he can so you see that's a different kind of miss but missing is a sign of love and when you miss remember when baba jamal singh wanted to go and have darshan of his master swami ji he wrote a letter i miss you so much 
I want to see you as quickly as I can. That's what is happening to my heart. And Swamiji writes back, your soul is going in higher regions. You can't miss so much if there's no internal growth and progress in your soul also. So you are making spiritual progress. When you miss your master, you're making spiritual progress. When you feel that kind of love, intense love, when you miss, you are making internal progress, though you may not be seeing it visually. Sometimes you see visual things inside, sometimes you experience it in these forms outside. So it's a, it's a very good thing. I congratulate the questioner about it. Thank you. It is mentioned in books that Kabir Sahib took his disciples to Sachkhan at the time of initiation using his power. Why not now? It is done. There are people who have gone directly to Sachkhand immediately at the time of initiation. They worked very hard in their past life and went to stage one. Even earlier they went very hard to develop Guru Bhakti. And three lives earlier they got initiated. When we talk here now, what is happening in this life, we are not taking into account what happened earlier. Swamiji is quoted as saying that this is not a path of one lifetime. We have used many lifetimes to come to this path. And it is several lifetimes that we have been waiting to find the opportunity to now say, let's say goodbye here and go back home. Swamiji says, Ek janam gur bhakti, janam dusre naam, janam tisre tulia pad, chothe me nijda. He just explains it. They don't think it's a one life affair that you suddenly get it. First, you get fall in love with a master. You fall in love with the spiritual path. And the whole life you build up that. Next, you carry this whole sanskar with you. You carry all this, what you've grown, this growth, that learning that you have done, and experience you have got, carries, and Master initiates you. You don't remember your past life. You say, I'm lucky to be initiated very young. I'm initiated by this Master at this time. You think it's only one life. Then you work hard, and you're able to reach some part. Say, you can reach you can reach astral causal stage. You can reach the top of the causal stage. You die in the physical body, you're born again. And in the fourth life you find, as soon as you are initiated, you reach Achkhan. It's not instantaneous. You've taken four lives to get that. But you think that the last step was the only step that's taken. I've seen people having that. Uh, kind of experience. There are people whose sh shabd, the sound, immediately opens up. There are some people whose sound is there as children. Some people have asked me, before I got initiation, I was hearing the sound the same way that I was supposed to hear after initiation. How did that sound come? And the answer is simple. You were initiated before. You're carrying it from past life. You're just carrying on from the progress you made in past life. So that is why when a master takes you at that time, that's your last stage that you've completed your course and you're just ready to go home. Oh, dear master, if the seeker gets Naam from more than one guru, what will happen when the seeker is dead? Maybe many gurus will come and pick up the soul together. <laughs> Thank you. I, may, I meet people, my friends, uh, not so many here in India, but in the United States I meet many, who are initiated by many masters. This one lady lives in, in the East Coast, and when she came to me, she had already been initiated by five masters. Her theory is that one of them must be perfect. Why take a chance? And why try to judge who is there? Get initiated from everybody. Then it will be easy. The real one will come and take you when you die. 
it's a risk free thing and trying to figure out which master to go it's a risky business so i used to call that friend of mine when she used to come to our meetings the much initiated woman later on i found there many much initiated people also there so i have seen many who have had initiation from many masters on that very basis now one has to realize that if the change from master to master is a progressive change from having reached one stage and then you are needing to go to the next stage and you meet you do meet different master in fact when you do some progress in one life and are reborn you always meet another master very rarely you will meet the same master in the next life so you see many masters anyway and they are all perfect living masters so naturally who will take you back a master initiates you today and he is a phys physical form you are in your physical form your idea of the master is that physical face that you have seen and you have made some progress you die the master dies you are reborn you are initiated again by your master who face is different whose appearance is different who is your master the one who first initiated you or the one who is initiating you in this life so you can progressively have many masters then you can also have masters at the same time people have been able to see more than one master in meditation and one person i met saw eight masters masters he had never seen in physical form he had only seen few of them and in the meditation he saw many others one of them saw having a round table conference and telling him something which was very essence of the whole thing the essence was who is a master what is the real form of a master the real form of a master is the sound current is the shabd in the bible it says word made flesh here we say is shabd rupi shabd rupi guru that means where the shabd itself becomes a guru the external form the physical form is only temporary for that form and the actual thing is the shabd if that is true that means all perfect living masters are the same they are not different they are the same no matter which one you have no matter how many you have the ultimate power that's pulling you is of the shabd which is one then which one will you see supposing you have four masters and four masters are all shabd they all the same and when you go when you die and the master comes to take you or when you are alive and dying while living during meditation which is the same thing which master will come then the answer is whichever master has pulled you with his love to an extent that at that time you have created a separation that this one is pulling me more and this one is pulling me less the one that pulls you more takes you a true story that we have we have dera in bias and uh, there is, this was set up by baba jam there was another dera also set up and that was in tarantara at a little distance from bias and that was set up by baba bagga singh and this was for a long time by the subsequent masters called dera baba chamal singh the other one is called dera baba bagga singh now when when great master baba sawan singh took over the gaddi at dera baba jamal singh the disciple of jamal singh another person baba deva singh took over the gaddi in tarantara but there was some problem when baba deva singh took over so in order to decide who is the real successor the leading satsangis came to bias and they met uh, baba sawan singh said we have little problem there can you come do satsang there and then decide it was great master who went there 